My name is Joe Doss, and I'm president and CEO of the International Bottled Water Association. We appreciate this opportunity to discuss environmental issues associated with the bottled water industry's extraction of groundwater. Groundwater, particularly spring water, is the primary water source for bottled water products sold in the United States. Because a long-term, sustainable supply of high-quality water is the foundation and lifeblood of bottled water companies, IBWA members recognize the critical importance of environmental conservation and stewardship of all water resources. In particular, IBWA supports groundwater management laws that are comprehensive, science-based, multi-jurisdictional, treat all users equitably, and balance the rights of current users and the future needs to protect the sustainable resource. We have a consensus here that decisions need to be made on sound science, and I would agree with that. And IBWA has supported the enactment of the 21st Century Water Commission, which will help those federal agencies share data with the states that can allow the states to make more informed decisions, have better science, and we think that's a great thing. And we support passage of that federal legislation and think that's a proper role for the federal government. In 2003, several citizens of this region, including myself, were concerned about the large-scale extraction that was taking place in the Freiburg main section of the Saco River sand and gravel aquifer, an aquifer that extends from Bartlett, New Hampshire, to Hiram, Maine. The recipient of this extracted water is the largest bottled water company in the world, Nestle. We knew that they were not here for a little water, that they were here for a lot of water. This raised several immediate questions and concerns for us. One, who owns the water? Two, who will control the usage of the water? Three, how will the water be allocated if it becomes limited? Four, is damage being done to the aquifer or the surrounding environment? Five, do the citizens of Maine have a financial interest in this resource? Six, which regulatory agency is responsible to sort out these many questions? Is it a state, local, or federal responsibility? And seven, since water is considered a tradable good or commodity, is trade treaty law somehow in? My organization, Food and Water Watch, is very concerned about the commodification of water, which is a resource owned by no one and needed by everyone. In setting the context for the discussion of the bottled water industries, mining, and rural communities, it's important to acknowledge both the industry's explosive growth over the last 20 years and its profitability, that its profitability is based on selling the myth that bottled water is somehow safer and better than tap water. The truth is that bottled water is generally no cleaner, no safer, or healthier than tap water, and that the federal government requires far more rigorous and frequent testing and, and monitoring of municipal drinking water. Almost half of all bottled water is nothing more than reprossed tap water. The FDA only requires that companies test four empty bottles once every three months for bacterial contamination, and they must test a sample of water after filtration and before bottling for bacteria once a week. In contrast, the EPA requires that public water systems serving more than one million residents test water 300 times per month, and utilities serving more than three million people must collect and test 480 samples monthly. Now I raise this issue because the lax regulation of the bottled water industry is one of the things that helps make it profitable, uh, along with the little that they pay to access water. A former chairman of Perrier was quoted as saying, quote, it struck me that all you had to do is take the water out of the ground and then sell it for more than the price of wine, milk, or for that matter, oil. And yet we're focused on the water company. I, you know, I'm tempted to ask you, Ms. Halter, if you, you would prefer and you think that, that uh, uh, Coca-Cola is better for me than drinking uh, water from a, a, from a bottle. Is it better? Well, I think what we believe... No, no, I need you to... You turn your mic on. I think that what we believe is that it's a societal question. Do we want safe and affordable That's drinking not what I asked water? You. That's not what I asked you. I asked you specifically if you think the water in a Coca-Cola is better for you. 
then what are that would food and drug administration's definition of spring water which i think relates to many of the issues where bottled water companies are placing their their plants in the headwater of stream systems the FDA has a specific definition that says if the groundwater is not extracted directly from the orifice of the spring, then it can be tapped by a borehole that is in connection with the same formation, and that connection has to be shown in a hydrogeologically scientific fashion. The issue with that specific clause leads bottled water plants to often be put in headwaters of streams because in those areas it's much more it's really easy to demonstrate that connection because there's very little flow coming into the system other than what is coming in via some localized areas the problem with that is that these headwater systems are also environmentally sensitive and they're areas where the consequences and impacts of pumping may be the largest. If you pump shallow groundwater, effectively there's a one-to-one -one relationship between how much is pumped and the reduction in stream flow in the nearby areas. So high capacity wells can as a result of that cause large percentage declines in the flow of surface water. When you reduce surface water flow, by the nature of doing that, you're also reducing the level of streams. If you reduce the level of streams, there's environmental consequences, especially if there are riparian wetlands right in the vicinity of that. Some of the concerns that have been expressed in cases I've been involved in are reduced navigability, degraded aesthetic quality, and impairment of the stream for aquatic organisms and fish. In addition, the pumping can alter the water temperature, which can also be a problem for the ecological systems. Finally, some of the most sensitive systems are wetland and lake systems, where if you lower the groundwater level below these, if they're connected with groundwater, the level of the wetlands will also decline. The seasonal effects are worse. If you look at pumping during the middle of the growing season, the declines will be more significant. They're even more significant if you're in a drought period. So all of these things are on top of the natural variability in a system. Beyond state law, I, I want to briefly mention the federal role in all of this. The federal government doesn't regulate water use, uh, and for the federal government to take on regulation of water use would be an undertaking that would make regulation of carbon emissions seem modest in comparison. Uh, but the federal government has been a driver of water use. The, F the Food and Drug Administration, the FDA, for over a decade, through its source identity regulations, have required that if water bottlers want to label their bottled water as spring water, and spring water seems to be the label that consumers prefer over any other, then as, doc as Dr. Hyman said, uh, it requires the water bottlers to go to uh, groundwater that has an immediate and direct connection to a natural spring. And inadvertently, this puts tremendous pressure on the water resources that are least able to withstand groundwater pumping pressures. Uh, bottled water is not a large user of groundwater nationwide or on a macro scale. Uh, but when bo water bottlers, uh, to comply with the FDA regulations, go into the headwaters of a relatively small spring system, even a modest size withdrawal, a few hundred thousand gallons per day, which is modest uh, area, can have a significant environmental impact. So I'd offer two brief recommendations for the committee's consideration. The first is I would echo the recommendations of several of the panelists before me that we give the USGS, the US Geological Survey, increased support uh, and resources to conduct extensive groundwater mapping, water use data analysis, uh, investigative studies, the USGS data is critically important to both state and private decision makers in this area. Secondly, I would encourage this committee to exercise its oversight jurisdiction and powers to work collaboratively with the FDA uh, and other stakeholders involved in this issue to reform and revise the FDA's bottled water identity rules uh, to basically allow water bottlers to continue to identify their product in a way that consumers demand and deserve but doesn't put pressure on our most vulnerable springs. I, I think the fact that these water bottlers are 
choosing relatively remote and rural areas for bottling or pumping sites who often seek access to water sources that are located in protected natural areas? And how do you think this committee should weigh the economic value of, you know, the, of the industry versus uh, the ecological value of protecting the delicate balance in these areas and also the uh, access to water for uh, uh, civilian populations? And it's a situation where the pumping that is occurring is drawing down the water level beyond what the natural conditions would be, so therefore the impacts are exacerbated by the pumping that Nestle has. Well, so was this, was this Beavers that did this? No, this is not Beavers. This is a low water level. How do you level. know? How do you know it wasn't Beavers? Because I'm very aware with what's happening at this site.